Hello everyone. Welcome to John Savile Presents John Savile's Fun with Azure. Yep, I've been watching too much uh, Big Bang Theory. So this week's Azure Infrastructure Update is the 29th of September. As always, we have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about. New videos this week, I dived into the Microsoft Entry ID Governance License, what it gets you in terms of features, but also what's changed. What are some of the big governance features that have evolved over time? Then I created a video about the ARC enabled VMware vSphere, not something I thought I'd ever really see, but actually bringing VMware vSphere resources to Azure and then bringing Azure capability down to that VMware vSphere environment. And then not a technical video, but I added to my virtual mentoring playlist really about how I can think of framing opportunity to the client I'm communicating with, which may help you out. So on to what's new. On the compute side, we now have AKS node image has gone GA. So in the past, we've had the ability to configure the option of automatic Kubernetes cluster upgrades with a new version or patch or minor version of Kubernetes comes out. We can pick which level of aggressiveness we want to automatically get that applied. But updates to the node image, i.e. the OS, actually happen much more frequently. And so what this new node image lets us do is separate from the Kubernetes cluster update schedule and aggressiveness, we can now set one for the node images. Now this could be none, i.e. no updates, probably not a good idea. It can be unmanaged, which is the current behavior. So for example, on Linux, it would go and every night go and check if it's Ubuntu for updates through there. Then we also get security patch and node image so that these would be weekly options that would go and check for security or security and bug fixes. It's recommended to use both of these and they both have their own maintenance windows. So one thing to really consider is that we always wanna make sure our dev test environments get updates first. So don't just go and roll these out to dev test and prod with the same values. And I wanna make sure dev test sees the same thing that prod will see. And so one of the nice things I could maybe use is if I'm not using AKS Fleet Manager, for example, that lets me actually have a more controlled rollout, we'll stagger the maintenance windows. So make sure, hey, my dev test gets it first and then later on, I would see that in prod. AKS now has Kubernetes 1.28 supported in preview. AKS now has dedicated table support. So if we think about all of the logs from AKS go to a log analytics workspace. And ordinarily those logs would go to different tables, which means I need to use standard logs so I can have cross table interactions. With the dedicated table, it will go to a specific table for these diagnostic logs. This makes it easier, faster, but it also means because there's no cross table interaction, I could now use basic logs. So basic logs are cheaper. Now they have, I think it's eight days before I then need to go and archive them off, but this basic plan may be a better option depending on what my requirements are. So I now have that option to take advantage of those dedicated schemas. AKS also now has the image cleaner in GA. Over time, our nodes pull down images which get used to containers, but then newer ones come out. But we get those older images just staying on the nodes, which over time may have vulnerabilities. It's just bloat on our nodes. So what this image cleaner does is really two things. There's a scanner that runs. So this is based on the Trivi security scanner that will come and look at your images and give them a classification of vulnerabilities. I think it's from low through to critical. And then there's a eraser. So this is built on the eraser solution that on a schedule you define, it can be as low as um, every day up to every three months. I think the default is weekly. We'll go and then clean up those unused, those images with vulnerabilities. This will help um, protect you from just having those images laying around with vulnerabilities and just the general bloat on our nodes. AKS vertical pod auto scaling has gone GA. Now remember this is pod, not node. This is not about making hosts bigger in terms of CPUs and memory. This is about the resources that get allocated to a pod. 
this open source project lets you right size your workloads. So based on the resource use it has seen, it will go and configure the right limits and um, requests for those containers. So it's gonna help me, hey, make sure I'm being as cost optimized and efficient as I possibly can. So based on what it's seen, it will adjust those processor and memory resources. Then Azure Functions has a number of updates, some GA, some preview. So in GA, it's Python 3.11 support. And also for Node.js, it now has the V4 programming model. So the big deal here is, I mean, there's a better folder structure from an organization perspective, but it has simplified trigger configuration. It now uses the fetch standard for those HTTP request and response types. And it also has things like IntelliSense. And then in preview, it now has a Dapper extension. So remember, Dapper is all about providing these standard ways to interact with uh, actors, with secrets, with service discovery, um, bindings, much, much more. Well, now functions can very simply integrate with those Dapper APIs and utilize those services. And it also now has Node.js support for Windows and Linux. And then Azure Container Apps are now available in China. So remember Azure Container Apps, the big deal here is, yes, it's built on AKS, but it abstracts AKS away. But hey, it adds things like Dapper. It adds things like Kida for, for better scaling. It adds um, network capabilities for maybe uh, blue-green deployments and, and Canary and all things like that. So it lets me focus just on my microservice and less about managing Kubernetes and extensions and other things. So those Azure Container apps I can now use in China. An ACR artifact cache has now gone GA. And really the idea here is you probably interact, in fact, maybe I'll use this board while I'm here. So you probably interact with a lot of different um, registries. So there's some standard registry out there. This could be things like um, Docker Hub, the Microsoft Artifact Registry, uh, NVIDIA, ECR Public, registry.kubernetes.io. There's a whole bunch of different ones. And normally what would happen is if I want to use those, well, my nodes, so my node in my cluster would have to have access to those. So what this new capability lets me do is my Azure Container Registry will now cache the content from those. And the benefit there is if you think about your nodes, well, they live in a certain virtual network. I could now, for example, project a private endpoint for that ACR into the VNet, so it doesn't require any public access to those registries, and instead can now just have that private connectivity. So it's actually a pretty big deal. And it'll be interesting to see what other solutions um, build on that capability. Okay, on the networking side, so Azure Front Door now has a domain fronting update. So domain fronting is all about the idea, hey, if I'm hosting multiple domains on the same content delivery network, maybe I've got certain restrictions on one of them. And what I can do is I can cheat. In the server name indication field, I put one of the domains, but then the actual host header, I put a different domain. So that there's a mismatch, and it's a way for me to bypass the controls on one of those domains. So AFD will stop that. But there may be scenarios you want that behavior. So what they've changed is, if those mismatched domains are part of the same subscription, it will allow it. So if you're doing it for a specific reason and you essentially own both of them because they're, those domains are in the same subscription, it's gonna let you do it. And the global load, not global, the gateway load balancer now has IPv6 support in GA. So remember the gateway load balancer idea is it's fronting some network virtual appliance. And what I can do is as traffic comes into the normal path, I can do a bump in the wire. So I'm not using user-defined routes. I'm not changing the destination via hops, but the traffic can do this bump in the wire over to this gateway load balancer, go to the virtual appliance, which maybe does mirroring or inspection um, or maybe protection capabilities, and then lets the traffic flow back and continue on its path. 
So it's a great way for me to implement network virtual appliances without having to struggle with, oh, well, what if there's multiple in an NVA, uh, a high availability configuration and messing with the routes, it gets very complex. Well, the gateway load balancer fixes that with the bump in the wire. So now I can do it with IPv6 in addition to IPv4. And then the application gateway for containers. Now I did a full video on this, but yes, it's got app gateway in the name, but it's not app gateway. It was completely rewritten specifically for AKS to take advantage of its native capabilities. And it's really the, the best solution for those layer seven um, and therefore network solutions. It has ingress and gateway APIs, but it's a whole number of updates. So the big one is now the controller for the ALB um, now has high availability configuration. And if the node pool it's running on is zone redundant, it's using multiple zones, well, so too will that solution. It also has URL, URL rewrite in the gateway API. It has multi-site support in the ingress API. It has custom health probes for both gateway and the ingress API. It now has a status for the ingress resources to make it easier for troubleshooting. That will just show up in a cube CTL description, and it has support for Helm release Terraform deployments. On the storage side, so managed disk zone redundant storage is available in more regions. So uh, China North 3, India Central, Switzerland North, South Africa North, and Sweden Central now have ZOS managed disks. On the database side, so Azure SQL managed instance has two updates in GA. The first one is the transaction log throughput, um, call it log rate often, is doubled. Now that's for the business critical with premium series hardware. So the new limit is 192 uh, megabytes, megabytes per second. So that's a significant improvement. So for those right intensive scenarios, uh, index maintenance, data ingestion, I get a huge bump. So it's a lot more work for the same price. Additionally, I can now restore a backup directly from an S3 bucket in AWS. So what I would do in the S3 bucket, I could go and select the back file. I'd say, hey, um, copy the path. And then as part of my restore database command, after I've handled the authentication, I would just use that URL and I can restore the database directly from that S3 bucket. There's now an Azure SQL database free option. So I can go in, it's for the lifetime of my subscription. It's a 32 gigabyte general purpose serverless Azure SQL database with 100,000 vCore seconds, um, free every month. So it's good for testing, good for trying out some little proof of concept. And it's just gonna be there if you go and collect a SQL database. I can say, hey, I wanna go and take advantage of this free offer. My SQL now has flexible maintenance in preview. So the goal here is that there's two different aspects to this. One is I can set my own maintenance schedule. So I can set a custom managed window for when I want maintenance to happen. But even if I'm not using custom and I'm just using the system managed, I'll get a five day advance notice of the maintenance. Well, I can now reschedule that maintenance. So I get the five day notification. I can say, no, 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 I wanna change that maintenance window um, to better suit me. This isn't available for the burstable SKU yet. And then miscellaneous, so the Azure API Center is in preview. So everyone now can try this. It's really just a central hub. I can keep track of all of the APIs I use in my company. Now these APIs could be REST, GraphQL, um, gRPC, but it's gonna make them really easy to discover, to reuse, to manage, and it's just part of the Azure API management platform. Azure load testing, that managed um, serverless JMeter engine is now available in more regions. So Southeast Asia, Canada Central, Germany West Central, and Central India to help me do those different load testing scenarios. And finally, the Windows 365 boot and Windows 365 switch have gone GA. So this is obviously, we just got the new Windows 11 moment was released, which helps enable these things. So the boot capability lets me take a Windows 11 machine 
and I can configure that physical device to directly boot into my Windows 365 um, virtual desktop environment. So I don't have to authenticate to my local machine. I will auth directly into that Windows 365 cloud PC. And the switch capability makes that remote cloud PC just integrate with my regular um, task view. So if I was doing the Windows 11 task view, now that cloud PC will show up. And that was it. And as always, I hope you enjoyed our fun with Azure. Until next video, take care.